Back in the old days of Hollywood, stunts and special effects were real, meaning actors never did scenes with tennis balls, and Pierce Brosnan couldn't lazily windsurf on the least believable tsunami ever created. But if you go back even further, before even crudely basic special effects and safety measures had been invented, you'll find movies that were so real that they ranged from grossly irresponsible to outright murderous. For instance, actors used to get shot at all the time. In today's films, shooting effects are usually achieved with blanks, tiny explosives called squibs, and if that's too much trouble, a dose of computer magic. But early Hollywood didn't have access to such fancy tools, so whenever you see a gunfight in a particularly old movie, there's a solid chance the people on screen are really getting shot at. Now, blanks existed, but blanks only make it look like a gun is being fired. To simulate a bullet hitting a wall or window next to an actor, they simply paid a guy to shoot it. Like, for real. Even cannon fire. All of the cannon fire in 1915's The Birth of a Nation is actual artillery, because the pyrotechnics to fake it hadn't been invented yet. That movie infamously glorifies the KKK, but considering it also shoots live cannons at them, maybe we should just call it a wash. Legendarily insane director Cecil B. DeMille disliked using blanks because he thought live ammunition looked more realistic. And I guess you can't argue with that. For his 1915 film The Captive, he wanted a scene wherein some soldiers blast their way through a door with real bullets because it would look rad as shit. Then for the next scene, they were to rush inside and continue the shootout with blanks. Want to guess what happened? Yep. Somebody forgot to swap out their real bullets, and an actor got f***ing killed! Even after squibs to simulate bullet strikes were invented, some movies still insisted on live ammunition. Action movies even ran ads boasting that they'd used real bullets in their shootout scenes. The studios would hire marksmen, whose job it was to shoot around the actors. You know, for safety. In William Wellman's 1931 gangster film The Public Enemy, very famous actor James Cagney nearly became an equally famous manslaughter victim when his character ducked around a corner an instant before a hail of studio-approved gun fire tore it apart. After nearly getting shot again on the set of the movie Taxi, Cagney declared he wouldn't work with live ammo ever again, and helped found the Screen Actors Guild, which, among other things, cemented actors' rights to not be literally shot at during a production. And nothing bad ever happened to an actor again. Hey, thanks for watching that video. If you want to subscribe, please hit the big C in the middle. If you want to watch another video, please click one of the links on the right. And if you want to get notifications from YouTube every time you have a new video, click the little bell icon and they will send you a notification every time you put up a new one.